Hi friends, uh, now moving on from the last uh, concept that was K nearest neighbor, uh, we discussed one of the most important and efficient algorithms for classification that is support vector machines. Uh, one of the most widely used and and, uh, and very robust and strong. So what, what is the concept about uh, and we would see the IRS data set again and, and, and compare uh, the uh, data set as, as a demo against the K and N. Uh, so support vector machines is a discriminative algorithm is a classifier basically but the problem that we solve in SVM is slightly different it's more of an optimization problem than in anything else uh, what we try to create is a, a max and a min optimization and we come up with a hyperplane now the hyperplane in, in, in a multi-dimensional uh, world people with vivid imagination should should uh, try and think out for, 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 for the benefit of all I have a 2d space and I have a set of data points in, in the picture and I'm trying to create a, a optimal hyperplane for these data sets to be able to build the classifier now what it does essentially is uh, it tries to minimize uh, the distance of the closest data point that's a now let's say the closest data point in these uh, blue uh, circle and and the uh, the uh, red uh, squares what we have is is these two data points are the closest and it tries to minimize them so the minimum distance uh, would be a straight line uh, between these two so that's a second is maximizing the distance of the of of the the, the optimal plane uh, from the closest points now the closest point uh, it's, it's it's it will be uh, the optimal hyperplane will pass as a perpendicular or the 90 degree from from these uh, two points so uh, first was minimizing the distances of the closest data points and maximizing the distance uh, of the decision boundary from these or the hyperplane from these closest point and that is how it comes up with the optimal hyperplane uh, for all the data points uh, which are labeled and, and hence your classification. So classification is, is pretty uh, robust and it's, it's uh, uh, very efficient. Now let's jump on to the data set that was our iris data set and uh, let's take a look again uh, the same data set uh, we had uh, four features uh, that was the sepal, petal, uh, length and width and we had three species. We want to build a classifier for a, for a given petal uh, and sepal details. We want to predict the, the uh, species that this iris uh, flower belongs to. Let's jump on. Uh, so first of all we compare or, or, or we plot. So we, this is uh, again data exploration and what we see is uh, these are the sepal uh, plots. Uh, and, and they're each of the uh, you know species uh, while Sentosa is clearly uh, classified but the rest of the two that is Versicola and Virginia are, are kind of a, are, are mixed up so we again let's uh, try and query petal a length and width uh, yeah so that uh, appears to be a better option for us to pick uh, from the lot and because that's kind of a distinct clear distinct boundary for us to be able to uh, build the classification so that was your our, our part of data exploration next what we what, what we are trying to do is uh, sampling the data we want to sample the train and the test data randomly uh, into a 70 to 30 ratio so that's all I'm trying to do I'm, I'm being uh, a little fast for the people who want to refer uh, the detailed explanation of this code please refer my uh, last blog because I've kind of visited this again on my K nearest uh, blog now I've built that the next is my final test in the train data set and my labels that's it and this is my final SVM model I'm passing it my train uh, data set this is the train data and then uh, and this is my test data so I'm passing it my train final and against the species I am basically plotting my train final has the the species and their uh, petal details petal and the species details so i am plotting uh, modeling the species against uh, my petal length and width so let's build the model uh, we've done that and uh, we are predicting uh, we are trying to uh, capture the scores of the predicted value against the test 
uh, data set from from the SVM model. We say predict. We we say the model. We pass the model, and then we uh, try to score. So essentially, what we are trying to do is is score here. Now let's build the confusion matrix and see what the score looks like or how efficient my model is. Uh, as you can see, with the petal length and with I think uh, there is only one mistake. Uh, the rest of the 44 of them are pretty good. So there was this one iris versicolor in the test label, uh, and it was Virginica. So that that's all this model says is. And, and let now let's. Uh, take a look at the sepal details if we were to build our model on the basis of sepal what our results would have uh, been so sorry about that uh, yep so again yeah we can see there are a lot of errors about 10 records out of 45 are kind of mislabeled here so yes we have built uh, the the model on the basis of the right features uh, all good so i think we have been able to understand the concept of sv svm and, and k nearest uh, the next important blog will be a, a short one we will just try to compare a logistic regression with a k nearest and an svm so that we are able to clearly differentiate all the three of them and know which one to use man thank you